Okay, so the question is um, workflow for using blend shapes, and what if you want to do something for efficiency sake? So I'm move up to this uh, head here. So let's say I had the um, move tool, and I've turned on symmetry with a little bit of soft selection, right? So in the interest of saving time, maybe I want to do something where I'm working in a symmetry fashion, right? Let's pull this up maybe a little. And, okay. And this is from a stock content uh, Pablo Picasso model from uh, Luxology for Moto. So I just brought this into Maya and I've quickly sculpted this one. Again, I'm not trying to be uber accurate here, but the whole idea is uh, a student had a question of, you know, well, how could you um, do sculpting on one side and then move that over to the other? So uh, one thing I would say is, uh, you know, I think that's a great way to get started so that you would get the, you know, from an efficiency standpoint, but also because symmetry is a little, un, you know, um, unnatural. So maybe as you're working and you do this and you get kind of a, a similar sculpt on either side, maybe what you might want to do is, uh, let's go back into this with the move tool, but now let's just go ahead and turn, uh, oops, symmetry off. And let's make this one just a little bit different and this one here. Right. No, I'm not following any standard convention. Let's do the same thing down here on this one. So let's make this side the smilier side. Right. And maybe let's just tone this one down a little bit. All right. Just so it isn't perfect. But we've saved ourselves some time and energy by shifting this around a little bit. Let's go back to this one, maybe. Let's pull it down just a little bit. Okay. Okay, so I have these two halves. Um, so a student had tried this unique way of splitting and flipping, but the important thing here with the blend shape is you, when you make a duplicate from this, you can't add any new loops and change the geometry other than the position of it, because uh, first of all, it's related to where the location of the locator is. And again, this just came from standard content. If I was doing it myself, I would have made sure this you know, is a little more centered. But the main point is that we don't want to um, add and change the vertex order, right? So whatever vertice this is, and I could go up to the component editor and figure out and look at it there, but that it has an identity. And so we need that to relate to exactly that point here so that when they move, whatever the relative change is, um, we don't get kind of chaos in the head getting smushed, all right? But it's that's a great idea that the student had to flip this, right? To try to use um, this kind of approach to save some time. So let's go ahead and just select um, each one of these and then we'll shift select the standard one. Um, so this is our target for it. So I'm working in the rigging menu and uh, underneath skin, oops, sorry, uh, deform, blend shape, I'll choose the little option, and I'm just going to call this face. Oh, in fact, before I do this, let's see, did I already? Yeah. So I named this left eyebrow, and I named this one uh, left mouth, okay, which seems silly because I've done both sides here, so we'll see here in a second. So I'll select those, select this one, and I'll go ahead and hit apply. And now if I come over to this one, I can click on the face node, and that deform works there and the form works there. All right, so that's fine. So why would I want to use this differently? So let's select this and I'm gonna hit the up arrow key because what I did is I grouped these so that I could keep the eyeballs in there as reference for any sculpting I might do. So I'm gonna duplicate this and I'll put it over here and hit up arrow and I'll duplicate this, All right? So I have, um, the same one over here in this, and I'm going to rename this one, right? And do the same here. I'm going to name this one right. 
And just so we can see that they're working correctly, let's go ahead and uh, shift these, uh, both of these, shift select those, and go back up to uh, deform. And this time we're gonna go down to edit the blend shape. And we want to um, add these to a specific node. And there it is, it's called face, right? And we'll go ahead and hit apply. Um, not found, specify blend sheet, not found in the right mouth. Hist oh, sorry. Uh, and I need to select it there. All right, apply. There we go. So we got both of those in there. So now if I go to right eye up, it will do the same. And right mouth down, it will do the same. So everybody's loaded. Uh, okay, sorry about the little jump cut there. Had a little technical problem. So um, uh, let's see, where was I? We had this uh, left brow open uh, or up but it's doing it basically for either one. So if I did right brow up, it's doubling uh, that transformation, which we don't really want that, but let's leave less left brow up and then we'll select the object and let's go up to deform. And then, so before we created a blend shape, then we edited the blend shape by adding those. And then, um, then we want to paint the blend shape itself, right? So. Um, let's go ahead and click this. Oops, let me double click and bring up the menu. So now I have a brush that I can use. And right now it's all, it just looks white because what it is is the, the whole entire thing has influence. So what I'm gonna do to make this easy is I'm gonna turn the value to zero and I'm gonna hit flood, which is gonna turn it off. And then I'll put the value back to one and bring up my brush. Oops, holding down the B key, I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna paint on this side. So in essence, I'm creating like a little mask that says, hey, you're allowed to do the blend shape here on that side. So you can see right now I'm getting the left, um, sorry, I did the wrong, well, his left, depends on how you wanna do it. In fact, let's just go flood it and I will do it the other way. Flood uh, zero, let's go back over to the side. So we'll call it the left that I'm looking at it. And back to one. Mm -hmm. Okay, we want to be careful about where this overlap might happen. I'm being kind of uh, overly generous with where I'm putting the paint, but that's okay. I just want to make sure that I'm not painting over here. It doesn't really matter what I do to this, right? So that's that side. So we want the right eyebrow up. We'll just put that to zero again, flood, and turn it back up. Right now we're not seeing any of the change because we had left it at zero. Okay. We'll maybe clip that. I held down the control key to just do the opposite and do a negative there. All right, so I guess we'll do the same for the uh, left mouth up. Let's click on this and say, let's just see how everybody's working. There's that side, and then we want that side. And now if we went to left mouth up, which was both, it's kind of funny. So let's go to left mouth up, which was both of them. We will put it to zero, flood, turn it up. And we'll go ahead and paint his crazy little smile. All right, we'll just do it quick, it doesn't matter. And then the right, Oh, and then we need to flood that. And let's swap these out. So let's put that down. Mm-hmm. And then right mouth up. It is, says nothing because I flooded it so it's there. So now if I come back in and paint, you can see I get all that in there. Like I said, just in case I move some little points up here, the main thing is we're just playing with the halves. And, Never really done this. It was the again a student was thinking about how to maximize all the this you know the idea of doing it um, with symmetry, and she was just flipping the geometry. So let's go back. So now we can do left and right independently. You know, we can build a little interface and do them all together. And the other thing too is you know that if you're going to use symmetry, this whole idea that you just kind of break that symmetry a little bit, I think, is so important because we just want a little bit of variation. Probably didn't do as good a job, you know, here. Maybe I just 
No, I guess it's a little bit now that I look at it. So those little things, though, will add up, I think, as we're dealing with that. So just think about that. But it starts to seem a little more natural than seeing it perfectly symmetrical. We always want to try to break that. So this is really kind of a good solution, I think. Um, you know, maybe it's a good idea to duplicate this head and put it off to the side as kind of the, the master that you're going to always keep duplicating. And then what you would do, again, was just you would just duplicate it, name it like the left, you know, frown and or whatever your little feature is, do it symmetrically and then duplicate that one, rename it as the right so it gets the right naming in there, um, and then just add them and paint out the squint, uh, the, the blend weights. You know, in the, in the, the masking that you're using for the blend weights, uh, blend shape weights, um, you know, you can go ahead and do really big exaggerated gestures and if it goes too far, you can always paint that out. I always think it's best as you're sculpting an expression is make, because, you know, sometimes people will just tweak the mouth here, but there's so much that happens up in this part of the face and you either have to think about how this is all connected in your blend shapes or um, doing it really big. And if you run into problems, you can always come back and paint out that little mask that says, you know, I was a little over aggressive. Don't move any points here when, you, when you're tweaking a, a smile or something. Okay, I uh, hope that helps.